that track. Yo, what's your favorite cuisine? I eat frogs and bugs and dung beetle pie. Sometimes I eat my snot and I don't know why. Think of it, scrolls of 1994. Once William Wait, Taft on. Croft <laughs> had walked into the village one evening in morning and he found a horse there and he rode the horse all the way to Puffany Bay where he found a local cricket prayer. That's all we can see is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay, uh, welcome back. Um, as you can see, our local crackhead made it in. <laughs> a new year, a new crackhead, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast, guys. I'm Christina. This is my brother, Spencer. And we made this podcast to show that communication is key in all aspects of life. If there's anything that we talk about that you would like to talk about more, or something that we don't talk about that you're wondering what we think about it, you can always let us know on our social media. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can let us know in the comments below. We're also on Spotify. So if you're driving to work or you're taking your morning jog or you're taking your son to go pee in the woods, you can listen to us on Spotify. You don't even have to watch. Everything is going to be linked for you guys. And uh, welcome and to the new year. To the new year. 2024. We made it, baby. We did. We did. Welcome to 2024. Um, what's changed? Well, let's just say not all of us humans are real anymore. We have some AI human beings. Um, they're doing test subjects currently at this moment. We're trying to intertwine both the human and the AI. So look out. That means to look out literally because your phone may t take over you at any point this year. So you got to watch out. Stay connected, but not connected into your devices. Thank you. Are you connecting into your devices? I'm not connecting into my devices because why would you want to become an AI? Because once you lose the experience of being here, because it would take that away, it'd be like another drug of society. People will want to go do that and be like, whoa, look at this world. And then they forget that they're walking into inception. Now, now, now. That's not the music in inception, but that it means felt you're, fitting. It, it was very fitting. Lowering down. You're not becoming a human anymore. You were becoming an animal. <laughs> what kind of animal? I don't know. Because once they take those goggles off, only time will tell. <laughs> what goggles? The VR goggles. But it will be inside their head already because the chip has been inserted. I have a chip. Or I had one. On my shoulder. He's gone now. They took out her bone. <laughs> 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 oh, this is news to me. I did have my uh, shoulder dislocated though as a baby. So that's when they inserted the chip. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you've been wired this entire time. So what can you tell us about um, some of your clan mates, other AI clan mates? <laughs> is this Clash of Clans? No. If you'd like it to be, it could be. <laughs> I'm okay. Are you sure you don't want to elaborate? I can't. I yeah. signed an NDA. I knew it was going to be something like that. Don't trust the phones, people. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like a smartphone to you? No, but we are a very advanced form of computers. And if we plug ourselves into a virus, we will become a virus. Is that not possible? Bring all the viruses to me. And this is exactly why <laughs> the shoulder thing makes more sense. <laughs> Okay, that wasn't my fault, though. Then whose was it? Our dad. Pushed you off a trampoline? No. You don't remember this story? I don't think so. He was picking me up out of the crib, <clears throat> and he was holding me by my arms. Oh, yeah. Dislocated my shoulder. They did say, though, I did not cry when the doctors popped it back in place, because I was a strong baby. You did not cry? I didn't cry when they popped it back in place. I was actually just staring up at them like, hi. That's what they told you? N no, that's what I said. 
Oh, so you recalled that? Yeah, just at one point, and then I went back to Baby Mine. Okay. Kind of like Baby Boss. You ever seen that movie? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Baby Boss, they're always conscious, and they're doing deals. I was only conscious for that one second. <laughs> Why do you think that is? I mean, I just made it up, <laughs> but... It's all made up? Okay, what is your earliest memory? <clears throat> I feel like I don't remember like a lot of things like I can remember like specific memories but like there's a lot of things that like I it doesn't have to be a full picture like what is the first thing that like you could recognize being the furthest back in time that you know it from your own perception I can start if it helps I mean go ahead <laughs> so to think about this this I actually remember being in the womb and this is a crazy thing because it's like well how would you remember that there's like this gel-like red fluid that sits around the entire thing and it's almost like a hazy glow. But you could still like see through it in a manner if you like saw yourself from a different perception. Because I think that's what you take into account when you pass the five senses is that you have extra senses that of awareness. Like you know when you're, that gut feeling is one of them that people are like, okay, sixth sense. I think you can have other ones as well too. Not just knowing what will happen, but being able to, I guess, maneuver with what might happen because you have so many different predictabilities like in your head. It's almost like the guessing game, but you're trying to solve a puzzle. It's almost that instinct where you can almost become a chameleon if you needed to be, if that makes sense. How do you remember that though? Like, why is that your first memory? Well, I think um like just showing me as far back as possible is what i aim for like when i had that thought i want to say i was a teenager when i like actually recalled that memory because um you have to think back and re recall the program that you first get scripted with that's where we're similar to computers is like what's the first things that you interact with because that is the things that automatically start shaping you at its true core because over time that person can't replicate all of those different things because they start to grow up in a manner. But I think in, when you start to grow up, you start to be able to see further back because you're connecting the dots as you move through age. So when you get to the deathbed, I feel like you would have a lot of related things, a lot of recollection before you had died. Like it's a bunch of realizations. There are some people that have said <clears throat> that like, the life flashing before your eyes is a real thing. Like your your whole like you see your whole life through and then it's like gone. Mm -hmm. Which I think is like so crazy to think about. Like you get to see your whole life and then it's like boom. And it. experience that within a short period of time. Yeah. Because like you created so many years out of your life, but just in that one instant, all of it was in that. I think that's what like feeling a true death could be like and where people get close to that with the life death experience because that time pauses almost especially if you're trying to make a move make a move to like potentially save it but it can feel very similar to that feeling where all of that will literally end within 10 seconds like you know your last 10 seconds of life is what i would think or at least somewhere within that range because everything it's like having deja vu but like you're in that moment actually and that last thought or feeling that you know that you experience everything else is gone after that but it's weird because it's like you're not gone in that sense you're gone in the connectedness to this brain into this body into this plane i still think you're in planes elsewhere and the further that you get into that concept i think the further that you'll be able to understand yourself back through time because I'm reading a book currently that talks about like knowing about your families and the deep dive into that because that's very important is where your history came up as like what were their reactions to certain things that like you may have had feelings that arisen of like some people are more prone to like anger which I would say I am more prone to anger so it's like why where and why does that originate and how far back can I take it and I've followed that road because I want the understanding of it. And I think the further that you go back, the more sporadic the dreaming can be too. 
because your dreams ultimately make up elements of the day, elements of the past, elements of the future, because your deja vu moments could be created in a dream. Have you had that experience before? No. I mean, I've had like weird dreams with like random people in it, but I've heard that like they're not like random people. They're like people that you have seen throughout the day, but obviously if you're not, like you're not focusing on them. Like if there's somebody that like is just walking by at like the store, you're obviously not gonna remember them or even know who they are, but they do like pop up in your dreams cause like your brain has seen them. So when you're dreaming, like they'll just pop up as a character in there. And like to you, you're like, I have no idea who this person is, but you have seen them before. So I've heard that and I'm sure it's probably happened in dreams because I have random people in them like all the time. But I've never had like a deja vu moment where I'm like, I've been here before, like not in real life. But in the Like dream. I've had reoccurring dreams. Like uh, I've, I'll be like, I've had this dream before and it'll happen the exact same way. Really? But, yeah, but I've never had where like I have a dream that like happened in real life. Does that happen on the same night? <clears throat> like the back, back to back? back? No, 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 no. It's like one night I'll have that dream and maybe like a few nights later I'll have the same exact dream. But it's not like back to back. It's not like I wake up and then I go back to sleep and I have the same dream. Cuz I have had it where like I'll be dreaming and like I'll wake up but I'm like, "Hmm, I want to finish that dream." So I'll go back to sleep and like be able to finish the dream. I yeah, okay, that experience is pretty interesting too. I've experienced that as well. Um, it's like where you like want to get up but you realize you do have more time on the clock so you sometimes you can enter back into that. It just depends on how far the connection you went out of the dream was because it's harder to reconnect the further you pull yourself out. But I also know people who are very intuitive to where they how they go through the dream is very adventurous. Like they feel very active in it, very vivid. And that's vivid dreaming. Is that something that you experience? I mean, I don't know if I'd say like super vivid to where I like feel like it's real. Like it's not that, like I know that the dream is fake. Mm -hmm. um, I mean like some key things, like one, like it's blurry. Mm -hmm. Like like if you needed glasses, like that's what it looks like in the dream. Like it's not a clear picture. And also if I'm ever running, I like, I can't run as fast as I normally can. And it's, it's annoying because I'm like, I know you can run faster and you're trying to like run away from something. And like, it's just like, it's almost like you're in quicksand. Like you can't like, that's how I know it's a dream though. Like there's some key things where I'm like, yeah, this is a dream. I know it's not real. Or just some like outlandish things will happen. I think I told you one time that a raccoon was attacking me. I was like, this would never happen. Do you go into a flight or fight response if something does attack in the dream? I mean... Or do you just not experience it? Do you wake up? No, I don't wake up from the dream. So what happens I mean, I, Well, because I've also never had a dream where, like, I know you've talked about where, like, you've, like, almost, like, died. Like, let's say you're falling. Yeah. And you wake up. I've never had a dream where I almost died in it. So I've never, like, woken up and been like, oh, snap. But like the one where the raccoon was attacking me, like I like kept trying to pull him off, but I couldn't. For some reason I couldn't. And he just kept like scratching at me. And I mean, I don't really remember anything else other than that, but it didn't wake me up. Like I wasn't like frightened where I was like, oh my God, it's a nightmare. I was just like, why is this raccoon still on me? <laughs> it was just more annoying than anything. That's interesting. Yeah, your approach to it was not the same as I would when I like, when you go up to predators in a dream, I feel like there's something that has to happen between that. Like it's trying to teach you something. Like symbolism is something in dreams that's very important, I would, I would presume. Like, do you have that experience where like it's the same type of creature that's coming over there? Or do you have, I don't know, like an ornament, this lady, a table, like are there elements? <laughs> like, that's not like, a lady. I know you were going to say that. That's a man <laughs> that's skiing, but I always think it's a lady, okay? It's just the face. <laughs> it could be a lady. I don't know. It's a man. <laughs> but <yeah>. Okay, dang. <laughs> like, you mean like reoccurring things to where I feel like there's a significance to them? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, not that I can recall. I mean, like the dreams, which, I mean, it hasn't happened often, but the dreams that like reoccur while I have the same dream again, 
I do kind of question, I'm like, why am I having the same dream again? But like, I don't remember any of them to be able to like, like the next morning when you wake up, like they say, like having a journal there and writing it down is the best way to remember it. Cause I will forget. Yeah. Like I'll be like, oh man, like it was such a crazy dream. But then like a few minutes pass and I'm like, it was crazy, but what was it about again? <laughs> like, I just don't remember it. So I think that's why I, I feel like there is significance to your dreams, but I don't remember my dreams enough to be able to say, oh yeah, this means that. Hmm. Like a raccoon attacking me. I'm not really sure how, um, what significance that has, but if y'all know, you can uh, put it in the comments or on our social media. I know you said you have a book about like where it explains like what your dream means if you have this certain thing in it. Yeah, there's certain symbolism uh, to each one. I'm not sure what everyone describes it as. It's all about what the action is in the dream. Like usually it's like the quest that you're going on. It will somehow have something to do with how they react. Like let's say it's a spider. They have multiple versions of the spider because that can mean different things based off of you know i guess maybe time and history each book is kind of set differently like that book talks about one thing but they have a lot of different dream books to try to interpret it because it's something that is very um unpatternistic like it's a hard algorithm to understand because it's something that comes so f like it comes out so comprehensively vivid to a point where that part of explaining can't even be used in this life yet. But it's one that may have occurred in another one, or it's linked to another one where you got insight, I would think, to have application to whatever you do next. Like, I don't, you say like a snake. A snake might symbolize, if it's attacking you, that um, you might have somebody who is going to make a sharp attack, would be one thing, because you're thinking about, okay, what if the snake fights? But what if the snake is just guarding its territory? Well, that could also mean something else. I would interpret that in your dreams as um, there's somebody guarding something around you. And I feel like terror uh, terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I feel like terrorists come into your house uninvited and eat your apple pie on Christmas. <laughs> Ew, they can take it. Yeah, I'm a fan of apple um, pie. Here's the thing with apples. I don't understand why people warm them up. Because I think that's absolutely disgusting. I don't know what it is about warm apples, but I can't. So, she says this. What about cold hot pockets? Sometimes you can't get the middle warmed up all the way. <laughs> Do you think it's better than the other hot pockets? Cold hot pockets? Over hot hot pockets? No. It's gross, but sometimes you just can't warm the middle up and then you're just toasting the ends and then you can't eat your Hot Pocket. So what do you do? You eat the, the cold middle of the Hot Pocket. And Are then you, you forced? Get back. <laughs> yeah, Timmy told me. He sounds like a drug dealer. <laughs> because he told me to eat the cold Hot Pocket? Well, that and his name's Timmy. He's, really, he's related to Cosmo. <laughs> They're not related. Tell us in the comments. <laughs> Timmy is an average kid that no one understands. <laughs> but Cosmo, they're not related. Those are just his fair, fairly godparents. No, those people behind the scenes, if we were to do a live action version, would be hanging off some strings saying, Timmy, let me grant your wish. Like actual people or puppets? Actual like, do they have people. a budget for it? <laughs> They, of course, they have a budget and they have a stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> they said, just in case Cosmo strings accidentally just snap, <laughs> we got somebody to fill in. Exactly, because, you know, that's a lot of weight to be able to carry and we got to do it through the sky. Through the sky? <laughs> Did you ever, I used to think this when I was younger, so you know how you used to like play with your little cars or you know how we make like these little towns with our little people to play with? Oh, Lincoln Logs. Yeah. I used to like have this fear that like, what if we are that little town and we there's are. somebody like big, just like watching over and making sure that everything is going how it's supposed to go. 
It's a very hard truth, but it is. We are just uh, machines in a cycle. But the best way to look at it, and that's somebody who's like nihilistic, like thinking right there, like they apply that to everything though. So they're just like, yeah, it won't matter. We're, good. We're just gonna be stuck here anyway. And then they drink themselves to death. That's one way of doing it that they choose. But it's not the way to look at it. It's all about the perspective. I would see that as, okay, I'm gonna oil the machine the best I can if I am in the machine, right? Because you want to, you know, let things progress and, you know, go on and make beautiful things, even if it's not real. It's still real to you in that moment because it's your perspective on it. I just like to plead with that person and tell them if they can move me somewhere else. That's like the worst way to do it, but <laughs> hey, to each his own. <laughs> Can you pick me up and put me somewhere else? <laughs> like in what manner? Like, I don't like, know, so 1600 I don't... Egyptians? No, I'm not talking about time periods. I'm talking oh. like, hey, I don't want to do this long drive. Can you just <laughs> put me where I'm supposed to be? Is you it know? granted? And, and they just like come down and they just like pick up my car and just move me. Dink. How often does this happen? Oh, it's never happened. That's why I said I asked the person if they can do it, and they never reply. Wait, but don't you get a response in your own head, a thought? From myself. And what is that? It That there's nobody up there. That's the first thing you think? Yeah. Because you didn't get immediate responses? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about, like... Uh, the, a god or the universe like <laughs> then who are you talking to your roof <laughs> no. okay so when i talk about like a little town like you ever seen those people that make those train sets yes right so that's what i picture us as there's somebody that built our little like you the the world i guess and they're just like placing things here and there and they're just like watching people like it's an actual person but we're just in this little town. I can't even call it a town. I see what you're saying. World. You're talking about the Bowler Express. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I used to think this when I was younger. And sometimes it comes up in my mind again. Because I'm like, you know, like you ever look up in the sky and you're like, what if the clouds just parted and I saw a face up there? That's it? That's it? What if you became the stars of the planets? Do you know how crazy that is? I actually think that seeing some random person's nose peeking through the clouds would scare me. But that's I it? think that'd be crazier. What if, you, oh, okay, so if you didn't become the planet all in itself? I don't want every to, single I don't want entity. to be the planet. Exactly, because it's scary. Because global warming and pollution, that's why. <laughs> so you're a part and of the And the Big Bang is coming. Again, 2.0. So, as I was talking about earlier, tarot reading was what I was going to say, not terrorists. <laughs> that ties straight into it. <laughs> because you just gave us a tarot reading. You're welcome. Um, anything about Mercury Rush? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Mercury's with Gatorade, sir. <laughs> You're oh, incorrect. <laughs> my apologies. Take off 500 points. <laughs> I did just see something. Um, somebody talking about the signs that are going to be the main characters next year. Yeah, okay. I was talking about this. I am one of them. You are? Yeah. How? There was only two. We looked this up. We're talking about like zodiac signs, right? Ma'am, of course we are. Scorpio, Sagittarius. Yeah, no, they were saying the four signs that were going to be main There's characters. There's four? I thought there was two. Uh, listen, I think everybody's just throwing out random information yeah, out there. Yeah, and you're consuming it. How do you think that's doing for you? We're now giving out false information. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> you I can never believe whatever you want to believe. I, well, I mean, we got to get, is this actually happening? Is somebody trying to push in? Who is it? Who's trying to do it? Somebody who cares about the Geminis. <laughs> I think it's Sugar Daddy Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar Daddy Steve? That's that, his name? That's his name. <laughs> Dang. He got insulted earlier. Now he's, <laughs> he's not a woman. <laughs> he's a Sugar Daddy. Is he trying to talk to Bob the Builder down there? <laughs> Dude, Bob the Builder looks busy. <laughs> he's trying to figure out if your tarot reading was correct or not. <laughs> 
Is that like tarot reading? Well, again, I guess tarot reading is reading into the future. It is, yeah, and they typically involve like some sort of entity. This is where the symbolism comes in that they use because they have cards that have symbols on them. Yeah, if you see a, a bird or a plane or a watch, that could be a sign that everything is working out for you. Well, that's why would the plane? It's random things, like random things that you see. Like they'll just be like, yeah, if you see a plane within the next day. Oh, I see what you're like, saying. That's a sign that like this tarot reading's right and your your future is going to be this. Or it could be completely different. It, you could be going on the right cycle or you could be going into the wrong one. I think it's the person who's doing the tarot reading. There's so many people that do it now, though. What do you mean now? I feel like that's always been a thing. Mm, I feel like it's gotten just because like people pay attention to it a little bit more now. I feel like some people do it kind what of. Do you mean you? Because people have been paying attention to this for a while. They I do pay attention to the tarot TikToks that come on. Yeah, I know you do. And this is where you're getting this false information <laughs> from. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, but every tarot reading is different. And they always say, like, this is a general reading. So if it doesn't resonate with you. I feel like that's a disclosure so they don't get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that's like uh, with stocks, they have to say a specific thing too. This is not professional traders advice. He says it so fast and I want to. I just can't do that right now. I was about to say, you just started talking gibberish there yeah, again. Yeah, you're welcome, people. I, I do multiple languages. See, I'm still doing it. <laughs> gibberish in English. <laughs> <laughs> and AI. <laughs> oh my gosh, AI will be insane. And I feel like that's what's not going to allow communication anymore. Because why would you need to when you have one streamline of thing getting you what you want? You don't need people at that point. You still have to communicate to get things done. Yeah, but you can just have the robots do it. How are they going to know how to do it unless you tell Because it? they'll be advanced enough. But if we made robots... We are... Wait. <laughs> in this house? <laughs> <laughs> we made robots, though. So, therefore, the information they're getting is from us. In, which would require right. us to communicate. At the beginning, until the AI knows how to communicate, then we don't have to. I mean, people literally talk to Alexa to have their house change stuff. They're already commu communicating to an entity. Is that not correct? I mean, I guess. But they're still going to need to communicate, even if they are advanced. No, outside of that. You don't have to communicate with words to communicate. What am I going to start doing? Throwing up <laughs> sign language? No, you would have buttons that would do it for you automatically. I don't know, like texting somebody? That's already a form of communication. I feel like we've already established that, like... People need people. They do, but they can have them in a whole different way. And this is what I was talking about at the beginning, the VR thing. People are going to connect on there. Kids are already doing it. The uh, <laughs> sound like, oh, I'm 45. What are the kids these days doing this stuff? <laughs> but it will be something where they're communicating on there. Like they're playing tag. Gorilla Tag is probably the most popular game for VR, I would assume, for like uh, an action game where they all get to do something as an activity in that world. They're already experiencing that. But they're all in that world, right? Yeah, they're in that world. Like Timmy and John are standing next to each other and they're- We got a package, oh my gosh. Let's see what's inside. Sorry to interrupt your podcast watch slash listen. Unfortunately, Bill Nation has taken over and corrupt the rest of this podcast. Thank you. No quieren hacer un cuatro porque los amarlos escuchan con el uno y el tres soy yo. Cuatro letras trae el mando, Jalisco cuidando y en Guanajuato el dondeando yo. Ya pasaron las blindadas, dice un camarada, no es gobierno, va arriba el señor. <risa>